Hello, Chris Tamardich, Brotherhood of Light Show, current YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to continue with our psychedelic music series of the late 60s and early 70s, and we're going to cover my favorite artist of all time, Jimi Hendrix. Now, I'm going to be narrating the show. Julia is going to be reading the lyrics and some of the descriptions. Let's check it out. So here's the show, Jimi Hendrix, graphic novel video title, Stone Free. So take away the description, Julia. This graphic novel is taken from a screenplay for a feature film or possible animation film. This is a Jimi Hendrix psychedelic biopic. The story starts before he was born until he left the planet. This YouTube show is laid out like a graphic novel or a comic book with photo illustrations and commentary. It's similar to a storyboard, which is a process of laying out story art for a film. In between touring with the Allman Brothers Band, Chris decided to write a Jimi Hendrix film, where he read 10 to 15 Jimi Hendrix books and watched every video interview he could find it. Then he chronologically laid out every possible interesting fact and story of, his, of Jimi's life. He did all that research and then abandoned it all because it seemed like a dark story. But now he came up with the idea for the film script when his friend said, you can't make a Jimi Hendrix movie without Jimi's music. So here we go. Eddie Kramer, Jimi's music producer and probably one of the only living people on the planet that knew Jimi better than anybody, was asked, where was Jimi coming from? And he said, outer space, man. So after listening to Jimmy's catalog and realizing that he wrote two-thirds of the songs and lyrics that are autobiographical, he was able to assemble the songs chronologically into a story. Chris was able to make a science fiction twist and write a script about the superhuman being who is Jimi Hendrix. The Thanks. YouTube video channel Chris laid out about the story has photo images, type, song titles, and sample plot driving lyrics. Chris will be narrating the story as you view the images that make this story compelling. So here we go. Check it out. All right, Jimi Hendrix, song number one. Third Stone from the Sun. It's going to be full volume with the lyrics. Take it away. Strange, beautiful grass of green with your majestic silken scenes, your mysterious mountains I was to see. Closer, may I land my kinky machine. So this is kind of a fly-in look where we pan through this crazy planet. Jimi Hendrix, still song one, third stone from the sun, continue. We fly into strange, beautiful, majestic scenes, mysterious mountain planet approaching a futuristic civilization colony. So now Third Stone from the Sun still playing. It's an instrumental part. The volume drops down and we hear the narration and the actors. Take it away. Land in the presence of the High Council, which are highly advanced humans, thousands of years advanced from our Earth. The High Council is discussing sending an angel down to the Third Stone from the Sun, the Earth. They're watching on a three-dimensional screen of World War II take place. They discuss. Advanced human spokesman. We've given Third Stone from the Sun Earth humans fire in earlier days. Now 1941 Earth time, World War II. With all this tribal at war, now we need to give the tribes culture in the form of art. And we believe in the future the tribes of Earth should unite in harmony as one culture. The silver angel that is floating above them, advanced human spokesman says, We have planned to send an angel. The angel will morph for DNA implant into Lucille Hendrix. Lucille is an Anglo-Saxon Caribbean tribe mix, Earth woman, who will mate with Al Hendrix. Al is an Asian African tribe mix, Earth man. Together they will produce a highly gifted artistic human being. So we see the silver angel fly through the cosmos to the third stone from the sun planet. Jimi Hendrix song, third stone from the sun. Volume comes back up and we hear the lyrics. 
Although your world wonders me with your majestic superior cackling hen, your people I do not understand. So to you I wish to put an end, and you'll never hear surf music again. Okay, so song two is Jimi Hendrix, Belly Button Window. But first of all, the angel flies down and morphs uh, into Al and, Lu and Louise. Is it Louise? And uh, they're in a bar, and then we see the angel fly into her, and then they go home and make love and create a baby. So now these are Jimmy's lyrics when he's inside the womb. So obviously he's telling us a story that he has a memory from being inside the womb looking out. Let's hear his lyrics. Well, I'm up here in this womb, and I'm looking all around. Well, I'm looking out my belly button window, and I see a whole lot of frowns, and I'm wondering if they don't want me around. So Jimmy wrote this song, uh, Jimi Hendrix song number three, Castles Made of Sand. Now, this is a metaphor for his life, and the castle in his life is his home or his home life or his dream, or his mother. It's in three different parts. So we're first gonna uh, go into his family at home. Let's hear the lyric. Down the street you can hear her scream, you're a disgrace, as she slams the door in his drunken face. And castles made into sea, melt into the sea eventually. So what happens is he washes, he watches his family fall apart and wash away. Now the lyrics are a lot longer in the song, but this you get the idea. So it's kind of like, well, shit happens type of meaning, when meaning the made of sand, but it's poetic because Jimmy's very poetic. The next sequence, his grandmother takes him over. Now he's like, you know, five, six years old and he goes up to Vancouver and he witnesses the spiritual uh, Indian powwows where they have totem poles and dancing birds and wolves and uh, smoke the peace pipe and he gets in touch with the spirit of the earth through the Native American tribes which he is one quarter of. So let's hear that story. A little Indian brave who before was 10. He played war games in the woods with his Indian friends and he built a dream that when he grew up he would be a fearless warrior Indian chief but he died in his sleep. So I think uh, castles made the sand melt in the sea. So that Indian boy melts away. And I think Jimmy realizes that he, that that's a fantasy. He loses that fantasy. That's a childhood fantasy. Uh, so now the next one is his mother is dies at the age of 33 and she's in a wheelchair at like, you know, a, a, you know uh, whatever home. And they, he goes to visit her, and in his mind, well, let's hear the lyrics. Prayed she would stop living, so she decided to die. She drew her wheelchair to the edge of the shore, and to, and to her legs she smiled and said, You won't hurt me no more. So we see the wheelchair and his mother melt into the sea eventually, and then out of the sand that digitally melts into the sea, we see the angel rise, his spirit angel rise out of the water and go up into the sky. And she's watching over him in the likeness of her mother, a likeness of his mother. So that's his, in his mind, he sees this. In the reality of the film, he sees it. Okay, Jimi Hendrix. Song four, 51st anniversary. So this is more, not so much a metaphor, more of a tell of his, what actually happened. And the song is a lot longer. So we're gonna hear the first set of lyrics right here. In Seattle. Years they've been married and a thousand kids run around, hungry cause their mother's a louse. Daddy's down at the whiskey house. And that ain't all. For 30 years they've been married and they don't get along. So good they're tired of each other. You know how that goes. She got another lover. So Al is brokenhearted and spends a lot of time. He's a uh, he's a gardener, basically mows lawns for a living, uh, landscaper, and he spends a lot of time abandoning Jimmy. But he does buy Jimmy a guitar for five dollars, 
and then Jimmy gets his red electric guitar, and now Jimmy's 17, and let's hear it. So now you're 17, <clears throat> running around, hanging out, and having your fun life, for you have just begun, baby. So as he turns 18, Jimmy gets in trouble with the law and ends up having to join the military and gets shipped out of Seattle. So song five, Highway Child. So Jimmy is in the military and his father sends him the guitar and he meets up with this guy, Billy Cox, the bass player in the picture here. And he ends up hurting his foot skydiving, but he gets to play in a band and he, that's the saving grace of being in the military. He continues his music career. But when he gets released, he ends up going to Nashville. And let's hear the lyrics. His old guitar slung across his back, his dusty boots in his Cadillac. Flame and hair just a blowing in the wind. Ain't seen a bed in so long, it's a sin. Now you may call him a tramp, but I know it goes a little deeper than that. So uh, he ends up playing with all these uh, African-American bands in the Chitlin Circuit. Now there's a map on the left here of the Chitlin Circuit, and there's at least 40 plus places they played, and they went on buses, and they just went from one place to another and played, and Jimmy had to play backup guitar to different artists, and uh, even they played some bigger venues like the Apollo, but uh, he ended up... Uh, you know, went from one band to another. Now, Billy was in some of these bands with him, so he's an old R&B guy. Now, these guys are all playing R&B music, and, uh, and they're all 100% African-American audiences. Back then, uh, 63, 4, and 5, there was absolutely, uh, they did not, black bands did not play in front of white audiences. So, uh, that was the Chitlin Circuit, and finally Jimmy decided to get out of it. He did, he was playing with Little Richard here on the right, and uh, uh, they didn't get along, so now Jimmy decides to move to New York and figure out a career for himself. So Jimi Hendrix's song, it's a Bob Dylan song, number six, Like a Rolling Stone. So he rolls into New York, he goes to Harlem, which is the African-American neighborhood, he meets Faye, who's over here on the left. He shacks up with her, and he's in her house listening to music. And uh, he gets turned on to Bob Dylan, and he realizes, well, actually, Bob Dylan is singing to him. Let's hear the lyric. You got no secrets to conceal. How does it feel? How does it feel to be without a home, with no direction home, like a complete unknown, like a rolling stone? So Jimmy is uh, kind of homeless and bumming around with different women, but he ends up uh, getting turned on to Bob Dylan and realizes that he can sing kind of like Bob Dylan's talky or rap style singing. And uh, so there he is with Bob Dylan up there. And so now he goes into uh, the Harlem subway. He's wearing a, like a suit and tie and he's got his hair in a pompadour uh, uh, processed. And he pops out on the other end, his hair's bushed up like that. He's wearing wilder clothes and he's with his guitar in the village. And he goes and plays at the Cafe Wa, forms his own band, starts singing. Linda Keith discovers him and brings all these record execs in. But Chaz Chandler, the bass player of the Doors, wants to produce a band, discovers Jimmy, gets him a passport, takes him to Heathrow Airport, and this will all be during a Rolling Stone or part of the presentation of the movie. So Jimmy is now in London. He gets introduced. He bring him right into the nightclub scene. He starts jamming with bands. He's a smash hit uh, amongst all the musicians in England. And it's a real group, a great group of the British invasion. And uh, he... Uh, him and Chaz, there's Chaz with the red coat on, uh, end up writing songs at Chaz. He lives with Chaz in his flat and he's writing songs and they read science fiction and they're like really good friends. And then Michael Jeffries, who's this ex, uh, ex Brit military guy, ends up being their manager. He's a manager of the 
animals, and he's kind of an unsavory character, but uh, we'll get into that later. And then he uh, ends up getting Noel Redding on bass, and Noel Redding's a guitar player, so he can keep up with Jimmy, Jimmy's heavy chops. And Mitch Mitchell is the jazz drummer, so he could really fill in. So he's got the perfect three-piece. There they are, the London Tower. And we're gonna go to the next slide. Yep. Jimi Hendrix, Experience. Now he's now they're formed a band called The Experience. Song seven, Stone Free, one of his first songs. Okay, after Hey Joe, which is a cover, it's Stone Free that he wrote. Okay, so now what we've got is we had Highway Child, Like a Rolling Stone, and Stone Free. So this is kind of like the sounder, his theme song. So let's hear the lyrics to this. And that's why you can't hold me down. I don't want to be tied down. I've got to move. Hey, I said stone free. Do what I please. Stone free to ride the breeze. Stone free, baby. I can't stay. I got to, got to, got to get away. So now Jimi Hendrix is a smash hit. He meets Eric Clapton. He meets John Mayall of Blues Breakers. He meets Steve Winwood. He meets Eric Burden of the Animals, uh, soon to form war. He meets The Who, The Rolling Stones, uh, with Brian Jones, and then The Beatles. So they're playing at the Silver Theater, and The Beatles actually see him play. And uh, after the show, Brian Jones comes over and asks Jimmy if he wants to take a trip the next day. And Jimmy says, sure. So Brian Jones uh, takes Jimmy to the countryside of Glastonbury in England. They're driving in their Rolls Royce limo. He's got two groupie or you know girls with him, and Brian breaks open a little pill bottle, a little pill jar, and he, there's four purple tabs. And he says, uh, th "It's called Purple Haze." So they each take a tab of Purple Haze. Now this is going to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll in this story. So just prepare yourself. Uh, so, the song eight, Jimi Hendrix Experience now, song eight, Have You Ever Been Experienced? Let's hear the lyrics. Just get your mind together, then come across to me. We'll hold hands and then we'll watch the sea rise from the bottom of the sea. But first, are you experienced? Ah, have you ever been experienced? Well, I have. So, Jimmy and the girls and Brian walk up this pathway to the tour and they watch... Uh, they climb to the top, so they have this 360 degree view, and they watch the sunrise and the purple haze on the shadow of the earth, because they're in, they're in the highest point of uh, the UK, and they end up uh, uh, they end up experiencing this beautiful sunset. And we go to the next slide. So the four of them are at the top of the medieval tower in Glastonbury, England, which is a mystical place. And we're gonna hear, are you experienced? And it's gonna go into Purple Haze. So let's hear the lyrics from, are you experienced to Purple Haze? But first, are you experienced? Ah, have you ever been experienced? Well, I have. It to Purple Haze, all in my brain. Lately, things don't seem the same. Acting funny, but I don't know why. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Yeah, purple haze all in my eyes. Don't know if it's day or night. You've got me blowing, blowing, blowing my mind. Is it tomorrow or just the end of time? So now Jimmy ends up, uh, his, he starts to astral project, which is his, his body is on, is on the tower, but there's like a shadow of him that comes out of his body and starts to project up through the cosmos. An astral projection. Similar to what you would see in the Doctor Strange films where he goes into the multiverse. So Jimmy's light body flies out of his earth body and he's flying through the cosmos, as you can see here. And he gets higher and higher and he sees all these hallucinations and he gets to the edge where he's almost out of atmosphere. And then there he sees the silver angel with the likeness of his mother. And it actually freaks him out to the point where he decides that he can't go any further. Because if he goes further, 
it, it'll be too far. So he turns around and flies back down and lands back in his body, similar to how Dr. Strange did. And we cut to Purple Haze ending in a London studio. So on the left here, there's a DJ in the London studio, and he says, that was Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix's new song to follow up the big hit, Hey Joe, here in the UK. And we cut from his microphone to Big Tom Donahue's microphone in San Francisco KSAN, and he's holding the Jimi Hendrix Experience album. And he says, man, these are some wild-looking cats. And by the way, Paul McCartney picked them personally to play the Monterey Pop Festival, which is coming up this weekend. And so there they are. They just land in California. Now, they've been playing all over the UK, so they're very polished. And there's Jimmy and the band, the experience. And then Brian Jones came with him, his buddy. He meets Buddy Miles, who eventually ends up in one of Jimmy's bands. And he does the performance of a lifetime coming up here. So, Jimi Hendrix plays Monterey on Saturday. And he ends up, we could possibly use footage from the Pennybacker film and cut three songs together, uh, which would be like Foxy Lady, and uh, it ended up going into the uh, uh, wild thing where he's humping the amp and then he burns his guitar. Or we just use the guitar burning sequence, which where he just literally lit the world on fire with this performance. It's, it's probably one of the most classic performance of all times. And let's hear the lyric on that fire. Have only one burning desire. I have only one burning desire. Let me stand next to your fire. So, uh, he becomes uh, an instant smash in the United States from this performance. So now he's in the UK and the United States and are you experienced is hitting the charts. He gets booked on a bunch of different tours. He plays up the Fillmore. He plays down in LA at the Whiskey A Go Go. And then he goes to this party. Uh, now he's a superstar in the United States. So I promise sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So this is a sex scene. Uh, he's, uh, he meets uh, Devin Wilson. And he, he, he sings, he's either singing Little Wing or One Rainy Wish in Malibu, California. at Stephen Still's Ocean View Poolside Mansion where they're jamming out. And uh, he sees the, she's like the ultimate groupie, uh, Devin Wilson. And they spot each other and He's, as he sings the song, he go, you go into his mind and he's either, he ends up making love with her on the beach or the hillside or, or in one of the bedrooms in the house. But that's the fantasy of the sequence and one of these kind of love songs that he wrote on uh, his second album, uh, Max as Bold as Love. So after his United States tour from the success of Monterey, He's back in Olympic Studio with Eddie and they're recording that album, uh, Acts as Bold as Love, Song 12, Up From the Sky, which is basically the first song of the album. He's in there with Olympic Studio in London, England, with Eddie Kramer, engineer, and Chaz Chandler, producing. And uh, so let's hear the lyrics. Let me talk to you. I've lived here before, the days of ice, and of course, this is why I'm so concerned. And I come back to find the stars misplaced and the smell of a world that has burned. So, kind of a songwriting partner, Chaz goes, where do you get these lyrics, Jimmy? And he says, I feel like I lived them. And all of a sudden, in his mind, you see the silver angel fly down and give the Neanderthals fire back in the days of ice when there's a lot of glaciers and snow up in the Northwest. And then when the, they fly back down to help create Jimmy, we see the angel fly through the smoke ridden. It's in the middle of World War II, uh, right around Pearl Harbor. And there's all kinds of like lumber mills with all kinds of smoke. And Seattle is kind of a smoky, funky place uh, in the Northwest of the United States. Now there's also a scene with Eddie where Eddie starts doing these pans where you get the stereo pan going back and forth and Jimmy just goes crazy in the studio, just loves that stuff. And they really start experimenting with sound here. And you can see the relationship between Eddie and Jimmy forming as engineer and artist. 
So after recording Axis and releasing it in 67, a second release that year, he starts to record uh, an Olympic uh, Electric Lady Land album. And uh, we're going to hear the Jimi Hendrix Experience song, Crosstown Traffic. He moves to New York. And why don't you give me the lyrics? You jump in front of my car when you know all the time, 90 miles an hour. Girl is the speed I drive. You tell me it's all right. You don't mind a little pain. You say you just want me to take you for a drive. You're just like crosstown traffic. So this is just a, it's a crazy up-tempo song. It was kind of a hit. So we're going to watch Jimmy just fly through this uh, lifestyle he's living. Uh, so it starts off where they pick him up in a van at his hotel. He ends up, or apartment. He ends up going to Phil Maurice to see the marquee. He plays under this giant liquid light show in 1967 uh, or, or 68. And then he ends up uh, going to the scene club where he jams with Johnny Winter and he picks up Johnny Winter's bass player bass and plays the bass upside down. And he's that good a musician that he could play a guitar upside down. And uh, then from the scene club, he grabs a limo and he grabs his old girlfriend, Faye, and they go out to Long Island College and they play out there. And then he takes the limo, he leaves her there and he goes back to Kennedy Airport and he flies to Cleveland. He goes and then he takes a cab to a Chevy dealer. He buys a Corvette, drives it to the gig at the Civic Center in Cleveland, gives the keys to Gary Stickler, his road manager, and says, drive it home. Then he flies back to New York and goes to the scene club again where he meets Jack Casty and Steve Winwood. And he takes about 15 people and they head over to the record plant, which is a few blocks away, at midnight to record the song Voodoo Child. Okay, song, uh, Jimi Hendrix Experience, song 14, Voodoo Child, off of Electric Ladyland album. And how, let's hear the lyrics. Well, I make love to you, and Lord knows you'll feel no pain. Say, I make love to you in your sleep. Yeah, what did I say now? Because I'm a voodoo child. Lord knows I'm a voodoo child. So they, these guys do two takes, and the second take they record this Voodoo Child song with Steve Winwood and Jack Cassidy, bass player for Jefferson Airplane. And it's just incredible, thick, swampy, bluesy, acid rock guitar that sounds like an orchestrated concert. But he's, uh, Devin is there, and she is the Voodoo Child, and Jimmy thinks he's a Voodoo Child. And so there's a dream sequence in the middle of his orgasmic guitar solos where he ends up dreaming about making love with Devin and another woman in this red lit in bed. And then it comes back in the song ends and the, uh, the, all the people in the studio clap. But there's one thing, Devin Wilson, she is sex, drugs, and trouble. So Jimi Hendrix experience, song 15 from Electric Ladyland, All Along the Watchtower, written by Bob Dylan. But Jimmy owns this song. He's the best cover ever done of any song considered by critics. Uh, now Jimmy leaves his apartment. He goes up the Empire State Building. He's on top of the world, just like a metaphor. And then as he's walking through Washington Square, the policemen are asking him for autographs. Even the guy selling pretzels is asking him for autographs. And here's all along the Watchtower lyrics. All along the watchtower, there must be some kind of way out of here, said the joker to the thief. There's too much confusion, and I just can't get no relief. Businessmen, they drink my wine. Plowmen dig my earth. None will level on the line. Nobody of it is worth. No reason to get excited. So Jimmy is a smash hit. Now he's a worldwide star. This album... Electric Ladyland is his masterpiece. But my question is, who is the Electric Lady Land? And I believe it could possibly be the angel. Mm. She's an Electric Lady Land over watching him, the Silver Angel. But it also could be the DNA that was 
planted from his mother into him could just be why he has to call it Electric Lady Land because it's in him. The angel is in him. So it doesn't really matter who it is, but it's not Devon. It's something else. It's something bigger. And nobody ever asked the question, hmm. who's Electric Lady Land? So now Hendrix is touring around, touring the United States, and he decides to dig a shot over in Hawaii and play Hawaii Civic Center. So after the concert, he's got a couple days off. He loves Hawaii. He takes off in a dune buggy, and he's traveling to the Sacred Falls. And the song, uh, Jimi Hendrix in Hawaii, song 16, 1984, A Merman I Should Turn to Be. Now, this has got all kinds of beautiful scales and psychedelic overtones. And he talks about mermaids and all kinds of crazy stuff. It's 14 minutes long. Let's hear the lyrics. Hurrah, I wake from yesterday alive, but the war is here to stay. So my love, Katrina, and me decide to take our last walk through the noise to the sea. Not to die, but to be reborn away from a battered and torn forever. So they swim in the sacred falls naked, and then they work their way out down the river to the ocean. And they enter the ocean where there's all kinds of colorful fish and turtles and dolphins and manta rays. And then Jimmy sees mermaids. Maybe they're like angel mermaids. Mm. But he sees them, and there's mermaids in the lyrics. So this is just a really beautiful psychedelic song, which, you know, covers like an Aquaman look, like a psychedelic ocean feel. So here we go, Jimi Hendrix Experience, Song 17, Dolly Dagger. Now this is going to be in an album that's going to be coming up after, towards the end of, the, of his career. Uh, but he's in the studio. They're still in the record plant in New York, but they're starting to build his own studio, his Electric Lady Studio. And there's Devin, and Devin brings like, you know, she's starting to get bring more drugs in and drug worse drug habits and bring partiers in and they're drinking and smoking and it's driving Eddie crazy when they're trying to record these records. But Jimmy thinks he wants to have these people. He these hanger honors. He thinks it's so important to play for them, to satisfy them. But in reality, Devin is becoming an ass a problem. So let's hear the lyrics of the song he writes, Dolly Dagger. Been riding broomsticks since she was 15. Blow out all the other witches on the scene. She got a bullwhip just as long as your life. Her tongue can even scratch the soul out of the devil's wife. Her love's so heavy, gonna make you stagger. Dolly Dagger. She drinks her blood from a jagged edge. So uh, one, one of the issues uh, Jimmy was having was she was having an affair with Mick Jagger. So he called her Dolly Dagger. So she's a super groupie. She's going to go for every, every you know, rock star she possibly can. Of course, Jimmy's probably the top of the charts. Uh, but then and when they, they go to re-listen to this, and Eddie Kramer's on the board, he goes, and he plays this one thing where he says, listen to this, Devin. And they're, all three of them are in there listening in the control room. And says, hey, Devin. Jimmy's song, singing in the song. Hey, Devin, give me a little bit of that heaven. And they, you know, both look at her and smile. <laughs> but she's not the electric lady, as you can see. He's scared of her now. He's going to mm -hmm. change. She's, she's kind of got problems. Mm -hmm. All right, so the song, Stone Free and the Star Spangled Banner. So Stone Free is his theme song. It's the theme of the movie. So uh, basically... Uh, Five years before, six years before, he was playing the Chitlin circuit where he couldn't get one white person where to to go see his concert. It was all it was all Afro African Americans audiences in the Chitlin circuit, which was a lot of small juke joints and some bigger theaters in the bigger cities, but it was still uh, primarily African American audiences, a hundred percent. But now. He's playing Atlanta Pop Festival, and there is uh, in the heart of, it, of the South, which is where the Chitlin Circuit was, which was totally segregated still 
in the 60s. So now, in I, I think, it, I believe it's 1970, he's playing in front of 400 to 50,000 people. Wow. And probably 80% of the, 90% of the audience is white. And uh, mm -hmm. so, I mean, he went from zero to hero and he truly has changed the culture, you know, with this. And then he plays the Star Spangled Banner on the guitar, which was unorthodox for the time. Mm -hmm. And they have a fireworks show. So it's just really incredible that he was able to do that. And now he, uh, as you can see him over here, uh, wear uh, this white outfit and this red kind of striped one with the draping arms. He's dressed in these angel costumes when he holds his arms out. He looks like an angel mm -hmm. when he wears these. He's got the red one at Atlanta and at Woodstock he's wearing the white one. So there's some connection to the angel. So Jimi Hendrix now after these huge festivals he's been playing and while his studio is being built in New York City, he decides to go to Maui for some R&R &R and they sandwich a little concert and a film in there. It's called Rainbow Bridge. But the song we're going to hear is Jimi Hendrix Experience, Song 18, Hey Baby, New Rising Sun. So uh, it starts off where they're playing on this field down here on the, on the flank of the crater. And uh, then he goes up to the crater. We get cut a scene where he's up there during the evening with his somebody that's in the film with him. And uh, he watches the crater, time-lapse photography, we watch the crater turn all the different colors from green to purple to red to, through the way the sun goes across it. And then, then we see the moon rise and the stars come up. And on the horizon, he sees the angel, the likeness of the silver angel, the likeness of his mother. And uh, here's the rest of the lyrics for the song. Hey baby, where do you come from? Well, she looked at me and smiled and looked into space and said, I'm coming from the land of the rising sun. Hey girl, I'd like to come along. Yes, I'd like to come along. Would you like to come along? She asked me. Yes, take me along right now. Please take me. So Jimmy... Uh, really believes that he can change the world with his music. And uh, so we're going to read an uh, excerpt from the lyrics while they sit up on the crater, but we're going to go to the next slide. So as Jimmy sits up on the crater with his friend, female friend, and they discuss Mother Earth, uh, this is the dialogue from that I've taken from uh, a bunch of interviews and sandwiched it into his philosophy on his career and the earth. Let's hear it. Jimmy says, so we play in front of so many people from different countries of, or mixing together under the name of peace and love is a great, it's great, unlike the World War II setup or all these countries where all these countries are against each other. The complete opposite now. We're getting them all together because the music, this is another way of harmony and communication. That's what we're trying to get across. Music is a universal language. Musical groups today should give the message of harmony and that's all I'm trying to do. So you could say he believes in peace and love, but uh, harmony is probably more likely. Uh, okay, so the next song is going to be Easy, song 19, Easy Rider. Now they're recording this uh, for the next record, which will be coming up in the future here. And uh, so here's the lyric to Easy Rider. There goes Easy, Easy Rider, riding down the highway of desire. He says the free wind takes him higher, trying to find his heaven above, but he's dying to be loved. I'll be stone crazy, love coming in at you. Stone crazy baby trying to find his heaven above, but he's dying to be loved. So what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to give you the sequence that you'll see visually, kind of like a shooting script sequence of what he imagines in his mind, which happens through animation while we, as we hear those lyrics. So let's read it. Okay. Looking at the waves in Jimmy's mind, he's seeing his life story. All of a sudden, the waves turning, this cosmic orange and green neon glow in the sky, 
turns dark in a world of, and it darkens, he sees himself surfing on top of that wave. A giant wave, the highway of desire wave. The hands of desire there reaching up all around him, grabbing at him. They're holding the wave up as he goes higher and higher. He has to keep riding the wave because if he falls, he will fall into his darkness and he can't stop the ride. At that point, he sees all the women in his life crawling their way onto his surfboard, trying to ride with him, but they can't make it. The one thing is missing in his the one thing that's missing in his life is love. He remember he's just dying to be loved. Somehow he survives the ride of desire that he's been living and heads back to New York City. So Jimmy is back from Hawaii. He's in the studio with Eddie Kramer, who's up there on the left. They just built a million dollar studio and it's a legacy studio. It actually still open to today, 50 years later, hmm. and it's booked. All five rooms are constantly booked and just about every famous artist has recorded in there. So he really built a legacy. And now when you talk to hear interviews with these people, they said the vibe of Jimi Hendrix is in the studio. <laughs> so he left the legacy. And once again, he calls it Electric Lady. Maybe that's the angel vibe or Jimmy's vibe is still in that studio. But how many musicians, you know, they go buy sports cars and stuff like that. Jimmy built a studio that's a world-class studio in North America, and it's still being used today. Hmm. So he, he does really a great legacy. Uh, but mm -hmm. he's about to have his grand opening after he's been recording for a, a month in there, uh, these songs that we've been reciting. And uh, let's hear the lyrics to Room Full of Mirrors, song 20. I used to live in a room full of mirrors. All I could see was me. Well, I take my spirit and I crash my mirrors. Now the whole world is here for me to see. I said the whole world is here for me to see. Now I'm searching for my love to be. So he's definitely searching. Uh, and the other thing is, at this point, he starts showing up at 7 in the morning. He doesn't bring all these posers in. And maybe that's what he saw. He saw himself trying to satisfy these people while he was recording, instead of satisfying himself with the music. So I think he really discovered something at this point. So they have a grand opening party and he's, you know, showing it off and he sees all these people. He's kind of seeing through this whole New York hoity-toity music world. And he ends up just at su some way, he sees Devin, he's trying to hide from her because she's trouble at this point. And so he leaves the studio, he just changes his tone. He leaves the studio, he goes out on the street and he sits in front of his Corvette and Eric Barrett is sitting in the passenger seat and the, uh, the two backup singers that have been backing him up on some of these songs that they've been recording, he says to them, I'll meet you in Pango Pango. And he gets in the Corvette and drives <laughs> away and they go to Kennedy Airport and they head to the Isle of Wight to do a giant concert. So Jimi Hendrix Experience, Song 21, Stone Free, so he's back on the road. He's playing concerts. He just, they fly in him and Eric Barrett. They do the Isle of Wight, which was like 400,000 people. But there was some weird vibes and violence there. It was no longer the Peace and Love 60s for some reason. And uh, they move on. They tour, they tour Euro Northern Europe. And uh, they end up at the Isle of Farman in Germany and this is him playing there in the red or pink pants and that's a picture of him before the concert he looks great he looks healthy and uh, let's hear stone free so dig this and the is why this is why listen to me baby you can't hold me down I don't want to be tied down I gotta move on I said Stone free, do what I please. Stone free to ride that breeze. Stone free, I can't stay. So I think what happens here is maybe his theme song he kind of ends because his bass player, Billy Cox, gets dosed 
uh, on LSD and they have to cancel the tour. And then as they're leaving, for some reason, the German Hells Angels burn the stage down <laughs> and the, the tour has to cancel. So he has to, they go back to London uh, because they were supposed to do m more dates and it was just, you know, what they had to pull back and go to a hotel. And so uh, we're going to check out London. Okay, here we go. S Jimi Hendrix Experience Song 22, Freedom. Okay, Jimmy wants to record music, he wants to make art, he wants to play live, and it's getting stamped out of his life right now. And the lyrics in this song, Freedom, represent what's going on with him. The world is closing down around him. So I'm going to try to read the lyrics. We had some technical difficulty. Julie is gone. I'm, I'm stuck reading this one. You got my pride hanging out of my bed. You're messing around with my life, so I brought my lead. Even messing with my children, even screaming at my wife. Baby, get out, get off my back. If you want to get out of here alive, freedom, give it to me. That's what I want now, freedom. That's what I need now, freedom, to live, freedom, so I can give. And he wants to give his art. But okay, so I'm going to tell the story now. He's in London. And it's coming down on him. He can't tour. Billy's in the hospital. Okay, Billy Cox up there in the top. He's in the hospital. He goes and visits Billy. Billy's still t out of it from taking too much LSD. As he leaves the hospital, Devin Wilson is stalking him and comes over to Monica's sports car. Now he's hanging out with Monica Danema. And she is an ice skating princess from Germany who's obsessed with Jimmy and is grouping out. She wants to take pictures of him. She wants to paint pictures of him. She's just obsessed with him. And he's hanging out with her. So Devin comes over and tells him, look, Michael Jeffries is looking for her. That's his manager. Ed Champlin, this old contract from the New York days, is coming after him. Okay. Uh, Alan Douglas is over there looking for him. He wants to produce him in the future. Uh, he's a jazz producer and introduced him to Miles Davis. So, uh, but Jimmy doesn't want anything to do with any of this business. So now Jimmy goes out to a nightclub. He sees Eric Burden and uh, War is Eric's band is playing there. Jimmy's supposedly really high on something. And uh, according to reports, and he tells Eric, Look, I'm hanging out at Monica's apartment. You're the only one that knows. I got the decoy hotel, which is what the Hendrix Experience paid for, but or the band management. But uh, that's my decoy. So then after that, he goes over to Chaz's and he hangs out with Chaz. Chaz has a new baby and he's got the baby on his lap. And he says, Chaz, I want you to produce my new record. I've got a bunch of stuff in the can and a new studio. Chaz says, I can't do it. I got to stay in London. So he calls up Eddie Kramer over Electric Lady Studio and says, bring the tapes, Eddie. And then Eddie says, no, no way. You got to come back and finish the album at the studio in New York. Do not, I'm not bringing them over. You got a beautiful studio, Jimmy. You got to record here. So he's got the world crashing down around him at this point. And uh, he's, he's not feeling the freedom uh, as we spoke of. So uh, he ends up going to a, he gets invited to a party by Devin. He goes to the party and uh, he takes a bunch of stimulants uh, and we'll finish up on the next sequence. So uh, Freedom is a song that he's not getting right now and he wants it. So this is Jimi Hendrix song 23, I Don't Live Today. So this is the last photos ever taken of Jimi Hendrix. Uh, during this day, he was sitting in the courtyard and Monica took pictures of him. She's a photographer and there he is sitting with his guitar. He has this complacent look on his face. And this song, I Don't Live Today, is appropriate. So let's hear the lyrics. Well, I don't live tomorrow. Will I live tomorrow? Well, I just can't say. Will I live tomorrow? Well, I just can't say, but I know for sure 
I don't live today. So uh, Jimmy goes to a party uh, that night, which Devin invited him to. And uh, he ended up taking a bunch of uh, amphetamines, uppers. And so he went back to Monica's apartment and uh, decided to take nine sleeping pills. Mm. So now Jimmy, song 24, Angel. So Jimmy ends up uh, going into Monica's apartment and uh, he's got these uppers. So he finds, she's sleeping, he finds these sleeping pills and he takes supposedly nine of them. And he supposedly, according to Eric Burden, oh. took more pills or more drugs than anybody else. Like they'd take one or two things, he'd take like four or five. So that was not uncommon for him. Uh, but they were three times as strong as the ones from America or that he'd been used to if he took sleeping pills at all. So as he lays in the bed and goes to sleep, we hear this song, Angel. Let's hear the lyrics. An angel came down from heaven yesterday. She stayed with me just long enough to rescue me. And I said, fly on my sweet angel, fly on through the sky, fly on my sweet angel. Tomorrow I'm going to be by your side. Sure enough, this morning came unto me. Silver wings silhouetted against the child's sunrise, and my angel, she said unto me, Today is the day for you to rise. Take my hand. You're going to be my man. You're going to rise. And then she took me high over yonder, and I said, Fly on, my sweet angel, forever I will be by your side. So Jimmy floats out of his body and joins in with the angel, and the angel and him silver angel with the likeness of his mother fly up into the clouds and the atmosphere and we hear the rest of the song angel and then when the song ends we cut to Jimi Hendrix graphic novel video stone free the end and we hear the song for the crawls in the movie have you ever been to electric ladyland off of the album electric ladyland and that's the final song, which is part of the theme of the whole story also. So the way I believe about Jimi Hendrix is in his four, maybe five years of recording, four to five years of recording, he made 50 years of music. They're still releasing his stuff. Mm -hmm. They're still releasing his live tapes. They created four albums out of tapes they had in the vault or three albums they had in the vault. And they're still releasing all kinds of DVDs awesome. and videos that they've redone. It's just fantastic. They're making the surround sound. So the man lives on. And hopefully this is a great film idea that we could do in the future. You never know. No, you don't.